1MDB has sparked embezzlement and money laundering investigations across One of the biggest corruption countries. scandals the world has ever seen. What may be the biggest financial scam in the history. Of corrupt 1MDB officials treated this public trust as a personal bank account. Follow us as we bring you into the courtroom where the biggest financial scandal in Malaysian history is being heard. By the Malaysian Insight, this is the Najib Razak 1MDB trial and I'm Patrick Teo. Najib Razak's 1MDB trial resumed this morning at the Kuala Lumpur High Court after a break to allow him to attend his final appeal in the SRC case. His appeal failed on Tuesday and he was sent to jail. What should have been just another day was anything but, as Najib, who used to arrive with a posse of supporters, was instead driven into the court basement in a Kajang prison vehicle under heavy police escort. It is Thursday, August 25th, two days after the federal court upheld Najib's guilty verdict in the SRC International Sindriam Burhat case and ordered him to start his 12-year jail term. To know more about the SRC trial, do listen to our podcast entitled The People vs. Najib Razak. Najib arrived in a black Toyota Fortuner from Kajang Prison at 8.30am this morning and was immediately driven to the basement where photographers were not able to get a glimpse of him. His loyal supporters were also nowhere to be seen this morning. When Najib finally arrived in Judge Colin Lawrence Sakara's courtroom, he was in a dark blue suit paired with a red tie instead of prison attire. He was also not in handcuffs. While his assistant was always at his beck and call previously, this time there were five prison guards with red berets who stood guard around him. They sat directly behind Najib in the first row of the gallery, keeping a close eye on the former Prime Minister. Najib, on his part, was emotionless, despite arriving from prison instead of the comfort of his home. He remained stoic as proceedings began for the day. Proceedings started today with the prosecution's 26th witness, Siti Zawiya Mohamed Desa, the former Deputy Secretary General of the Finance Ministry. While on the stand, Siti Zawiya has been unable to answer most of Shafi's questions, often responding with, I don't know, despite the fact that she had a detailed witness statement. Najib's lead counsel, Shafi Abdullah, had had enough of her non-answers this morning and finally asked if she had played any part in preparing her witness statement. Did you draft this witness statement yourself? In truth, you don't know whether the details in your statement are true, accurate or to your personal knowledge, Shafi asked a prosecution witness. To this, Siti Zawiya said she was not privy to what was written in her witness statement. Someone in the finance ministry drafted it, she told the court. The officers handling the loans in MOF drafted it, but I don't know who else from MOF Inc. was involved, she explained further. Siti Zawiya also said she also did not read the prepared statement in detail and had merely signed it. I was only given at the last minute. I didn't have the privilege of reading everything. It was drafted, but not in my presence. I was just given the document, she said. Shafi had earlier tried to confer with the prosecution to try and remove her as a witness. She has a wonderful textbook statement, but now she says she doesn't know anything, Shafi told Judge Colin Lawrence Akera, while reminding Siti Zawiya that she was under oath. The prosecution should withdraw this witness. She is not useful to the prosecution. We are not going anywhere. This is the first time in 46 years that I have encountered such a witness, Shafi added. 
Siti Zawiya had previously testified that Najib held all the power in 1MDB based on the company's memorandum and articles of association. She said Article 117 of 1MDB Constitution gave the then Prime Minister power to approve the appointments of directors, the senior management team, as well as matters relating to financial commitments were added without consulting MOF Inc. Siti Zawiya said that Article 117 also gave Najib power over any financial commitment, including investments, which was likely to affect government guarantees. She also testified that the current government was still paying the 3 billion US dollar or 13.4 billion ringgit loan that was given to state-owned 1MDB. The loan was sanctioned by the then government after Najib, who was the finance minister, signed off the letter of support in 2013. And with that, court ended for the day. Najib was escorted out of the court by the prison officials into a car waiting at the basement. Outside the court, a small group of 20 supporters had congregated and waited for Najib. As his convoy drove by, there were loud chants of Hidup Bosku. Najib, prison or not, wound down the window a little bit and waved at them. The trial will resume on September 5th. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by the Malaysian Insight. It was written by Revati Supramaniam and I'm Patrick Teo.